टेक्नोलॉजी टेक्निकल टिप्स एंड ट्रिक एंड हाउ टू अर्न ऑनलाइन मनी इन सारी स्टफ रिलेटेड वीडियो के लिए आप मेरे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करें और बेल बटन को क्लिक करके ईमेल नोटिफिकेशन को इनेबल कर लें वट इज कैरियर एग्रीगेशन बिफोर कैरियर एग्रीगेशन नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वाई कैरियर एग्रीगेशन वाई करंट ट्वेंटी मेगा हर्ट एल टी ई बैंड विथ इज नॉट इनफ current LTE supports 20 MHz bandwidth and maximum, there are only a few network operators who is certified for such a wide bandwidth. The most common bandwidth that network operators has for LTE is 10 MHz, which means they are not fully utilizing the LTE capability in terms of bandwidth. This is not because of technical restriction, it is purely because of licensing issues for the allocated bandwidth. Even though there is not many network operators who has 20 MHz bandwidth, there are some network operators who has licensed multiple band. Example, two separated 10 MHz bandwidth and two or more 5 MHz bandwidth. These network operators wants to combine those multiple bands to achieve wide bandwidth. What is carrier aggregation? Before carrier aggregation need to understand. What is component carrier? Aggregation means grouping in carriers bearer so component carrier means two or more component carriers can be aggregated to support wider transmission bandwidths up to 100 megahertz. Now what is carrier aggregation? It is of the most distinct features of 4G LTE advanced. Carrier aggregation allows expansion of effective bandwidth delivered to a user terminal through concurrent utilization of radio resources across multiple carriers. Multiple component carriers are aggregated to form a larger overall transmission bandwidth. Types of component carriers, primary cell and secondary cell, primary cell. The primary cell is the cell which is selected by the UE during cell search and used for RRC connection establishment. The measurement and mobility procedures are based on primary cell. The primary cell can never be deactivated. There is only one primary cell per mobile device. Secondary or serving cell. The secondary or serving cells are those cells which are selected by the network based on their UE capability and the location of their UA which can serve their UA simultaneously along with the primary cell. The secondary cells are activated or deactivated by MAC layer and get assigned to the mobile device by higher layers. There can be more than one secondary cell per mobile device. The secondary cell are added and removed as required, while the primary component carrier is only changed at handover. Now, primary serving cell. The RRC connection is only handled by the primary serving cell, served by the primary component carrier. It is also on the downlink primary component carrier that the UA receives an AS information, such as security parameters. In idle mode the UE listens to system information on the downlink primary component carrier. On the uplink primary component carrier PUC, CH, is sent. Random access procedure is performed over primary cell. PDC, CH, PDS, CH, PUC, CH, push can be transmitted on primary serving cell. Measurements and mobility procedure are based on primary serving cell. Primary serving cell cannot be deactivated. Now secondary serving cell. Secondary serving cell is configured after connection establishment to provide additional radio resources. Ratch procedure is not allowed in a secondary cell. PDC, CH, PDS, CH, push can be transmitted on secondary serving. MAC, layer-based activation or deactivation is supported for secondary serving, for UE battery saving. Can be cross-scheduled in secondary serving. Carrier aggregation supports wider bandwidths. Using carrier aggregation, a spectrum of up to five component carriers can be aggregated up to a joint bandwidth of 100 MHz. Now we will discuss overview of carrier allocation in network architecture. Each aggregated carrier is referred to as a component carrier. The component carrier can have a bandwidth of 1.4, 3, 5, 10, 
15 or 20 MHz, and a maximum of 5 component carriers can be aggregated in maximum aggregated band with this 100 MHz. An FDD. The number of aggregated carriers can be different in downlink and uplink. Number of uplink component carriers is always equal to or lower than the number of downlink component carriers. The individual component carriers can also be of different bandwidths. Carrier aggregation is applicable to both FDD and TDD. In the case of TDD, the uplink, downlink subframe configuration must be the same for all component carrier. For TDD the number of component carrier as well as the bandwidths of each component carrier will normally be the same for downlink and uplink. Two example of carrier aggregation, the first based upon five component carriers and the second based upon two component carrier. The bandwidth of each component carrier is scenario dependent and does not have to be the maximum channel bandwidth of 20 MHz. All component carriers belong to the same ENODEB and are synchronized on the air interface. This means that a single set of timing advance command are used for all component carriers. We will discuss over air messages and log analysis in next video tutorial. Thanks. Technology, technical tips and tricks and how to earn online money. In all these stuff related video के लिए आप मेरे channel को subscribe करें और bell button को click करके email notification को enable कर लें.